Here we go! On my way to Jiu-Jitsu! I'm feeling tired today. Because of the, the last 10 nights is starting to catch up to me. But uh, today's going to be my last day of class this week, probably. So, yeah. Also, this is the first time I've ever gone uh, three days back to back. Maybe that's why I'm also kind of feeling a little tired. Um, but anyway, let's see what today's class holds. Today was great. Going in, I was just like, blah, but I feel good. It's amazing what physical activity does for you. And I think these last 10 days, I've been spending a lot more time awake at night and a lot less a lot more time in bed during the day and as a result I feel it uh, you know in, as well in the, in the moment uh, but yeah the thing I liked about today and this is one of the benefits of going to class back to back um, uh, especially during uh, these uh, Tuesday Wednesday Thursday uh, is that you get to practice what you practiced the previous day again over and over again and uh, and so I'm finally starting to get the whole um, uh, the technique down. In fact, to the point where if I count myself surviving as a win, like there is basically this game that we play at the end. And the game is that whatever technique you, you applied, all the top belts, they go on the ground, and then we all line up to go up against those belts. Essentially, the person on the bottom of the top belt, their job is to sweep us, and the person on the bottom, and the person on the top, uh, the lower ranking belt, their job is to practice the technique that they uh, drilled in class. Uh, and so now, but this time with full intensity or at least 80% intensity. And although the professor says, hey, uh, these are white belts, these are blue belts, uh, you know, just, you know, make it so that it's challenging, but at the same time, don't crush them. And so uh, today there's a lot more overwhelming number of uh, white and blue belts in class today. And I think because it's Thursday, right before the weekend and all that good stuff. And so, um, first round I go in, you know, basically get sweeped and go back in line. And then second line, I, I second time I go back in and I think he was a blue belt, high ranking blue belt who kind of let me practice the technique and I got on top. I mean, I didn't get on top, I sweeped him. Uh, and so, uh, and then after doing so, next person, I sweeped him, which was awesome. But he was the white belt, fellow white belt. And then third person, I almost sweeped him. Right when the bell rang, I grabbed his uh, two heels and I pushed. He was trying to break my guard, but at this end, the only thing I'm realizing, uh, I gotta stop gripping, right? It's kinda, it, it, I'm starting to feel it in my uh, knuckles. And, um, uh, and one of the things I was listening while watching videos on YouTube is that one of the mistakes that people make is that they grip too much. Even Professor himself is saying everybody's just like, ah, trying to grip. Whereas, uh, and you know, it's easy because, you know, the, the gi here is really tough. And so you can grab it like a rope. Uh, but what's interesting is uh, one of the legends in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, the cousins of the Gracies, uh, the Machados, John Jack Machado, he actually has no fingers in one hand. So he actually uh, developed an entire system around that. And the funny thing is, coming from a grappling background where we don't use gis, our whole thing is to basically go in and disrupt uh, the joints and the shoulders and whatnot. So I decided, you know what, my fingers are feeling a little sore today. I'm not going to grip. And the guy was just trying to push his elbows down on my knees and stuff. I just grabbed his elbows. I just kept pulling his elbows, kept pulling his elbows, kept pulling his elbows. Until finally, I got an opportunity. I grabbed his heels and I pushed and he fell back. Um, and that's when I realized that uh, this is where I learned the technique, then bring in things that you kind of know to supplement the stuff and the class material. Because uh, at this point, I'm on the bottom. Right now, I'm defending. I have a lot more to pull from. I don't necessarily am constrained by the drill that we did. So uh, that was, uh, so, and if anybody's wondering what the drill was, essentially if we're in the guard, the idea is to pass the guard. And part of being able to break the guard is what I'm calling uh, being able to do a straight bar uh, dip, where in fact get into a dip position before you descend, but keep your arms locked out, put all the pressure on the solar plexus and hips, and the hips specifically, this is what I learned, the hips specifically, because it's easy for, uh, it's easy for you to, uh, let go of the hips and they'll just push their hips up and thus you won't be able to break the guard. 
Um, so that's basically it. Control the hips, you control the body. Control the head, you control the body. And so uh, that's pretty much it. And chest to chest is where the pressure is at um, to be able to control movement of the individual. And so and it was interesting because if you uh, watch this, I'm going to leave, leave you with this video. Um, uh, he basically, this guy, he's, uh, um, I was just observing them and the blue belt is teaching the white belt and all the blue belt is doing is just applying chest to chest pressure. Uh, so I'll leave you with that. I'll see you guys later. Show me this one. And then you put the pressure on it like this. You see it? Yeah. Then I'm going to get a tap.